Good evening. Thank you both for being here today. Oh, oh thank you for coming. <laughs> I love you, Bill. <laughs> I know you've also been around Washington uh, a long time. When I talk to people from outside of Washington about House of Cards, uh, my friends from outside of Washington all say the same thing. Please, Ron, tell me it's not really that bad. But how much real Washington is in there, and how much of real Washington do you think about as you develop uh, Frank Underwood? Um, whether they might say this publicly or not publicly, I, I have talked to more people who were in politics who've said to me, it's closer than you can imagine. <laughs> it's the most accurate description of how politics actually works that we've ever seen. Now, you and I, when we first met, I was playing you in a film that was an examination of what happened in the year 2000 when we didn't know who the president was for 46 days? 36 days. 36 days. I'm sitting here with uh, Ron Klain, who is the character that I play in the film Recount. Um, is it just a coincidence that you've played characters so, so involved in politics, so active in politics, and a bit on the shady side ethically, uh, or is this really, I wouldn't say Ron Klain was on the shady. <laughs> well. In the wake of allegations against Harvey Weinstein, accusations against Hollywood elite are resulting in swift and unforgiving consequences. The latest person accused of misconduct, Kevin Spacey. Anthony Rapp, best known for his role in Star Trek, says Spacey came onto him sexually in 1986 like when he was just 14 years old. Speaking like with BuzzFeed very News, very Rapp says Spacey invited him over to his apartment for a party. At the end of the night, Rapp says they were alone and Spacey climbed on top of him. Rap says he was able to squirm away and hasn't spoken to the House of Cards actor since. Ghislaine Maxwell, a British socialite and alleged accomplice of convicted sex offender Jeffrey Epstein, and Oscar winning actor Kevin Spacey sitting on the thrones at Buckingham Palace. I wouldn't say Ron Klain was on the shade. Well, <laughs> you never know. So, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ron Klain is an attorney, a political consultant, and a former lobbyist who is currently serving as White House Chief of Staff under Joe Biden. In 2014, he was appointed by Obama to be the White House Ebola Response Coordinator, aka the Ebola Czar. Although I don't I don't remember reading anything about his history involving anything medical. In 2018, Ron Klain was a keynote speaker at this conference, like a week-long event thing. It's called Outbreak Week. I guess it's kind of like a shark week for bioterrorists. I'm not really sure. But during that conference that he spoke at, he was talking about the future and possibility of pandemics and what we need to do to get ahead of things like he was talking about misinformation disinformation on facebook and how do we uh control what people are saying on those platforms because they don't want the truth getting out but he said it is the ability of false information to crowd out truthful information of fear to spread and paralyze, of paranoia and hatred and conspiracy theories to capture the minds of millions that poses a great threat in a time of crisis. Back in 2014, whenever these forces got strong and we risked being overwhelmed by them, my office uh, developed a highly sophisticated and technical countermeasure that went by the initials PTFOT that stood for put Tony Fauci on television. <laughs> the ability to have a national icon like Tony as a messenger of science and information, of truth and education, was an invaluable asset at critical moments during the Ebola outbreak in 2014. But not every country has a Tony Fauci, and even Tony cannot be everywhere at once. Solving the challenge of hyperconnectedness and hyperinformation is absolutely critical for dealing with the dangers of a future epidemic. 
Once again, the burden falls on this community to take on the false information, the conspiracy theories, to tackle the Twitter trolls, and to create a communications environment that will permit and promote an effective epidemic response. Who wields heavy influence on what's happening in Washington right now. President Biden's chief of staff, Ron Klain. Chief national correspondent for the New York Times Magazine, Mark Leibovich, profiles Klain in his latest piece, and he joins us now. So, Mark, what is, I guess, the Klain way? What are you learning about how he is running this White House? He is running this White House.